So greetings to all and welcome to this session. I was saying I was going through this uh, mountain path and uh, I came across this word Kulachala. Kulachala is a Sanskrit word actually, which uh, means, Achala means stillness. Kula means the race, the clan, the lineage. So Kulachala means the lineage of stillness. I said Ramana Maharishi Ji is from the lineage of stillness. Kulachala, Arunachala. And interestingly, they have given the age of uh, Arunachala and Himalayas. So as we said, you know, Hima it's uh, older than the Himalayas, Arunachala. Himalayas are supposed to be around 50 million years old, while Arunachala is 3,500 million years old. So this is the oldest mountains, and it says, uh, there is a reference of this in the Atharva Veda, which came first, after which came Rig Veda. So mention of Himalayas is in the Rig Vedas, and mention of Arunachala is in the Atharva Veda, and it is referred to as, Arunachala is referred to as the Agni Stamba, the pillar of light, Agni Stamba. Interesting, quite interesting. I have never read this before, but uh, sounds good because we had always learned that Arunachala is among the first of the creations. Okay, don't cover up your videos. I want to see whether you are in the room. Okay, so please. Okay. Thus, Arunachala by age and Himalayas by height are Kulachalas. So, Himalayas also are known as Kulachala. And uh, Arunachala is also known as Kulachala. The lineage of the stead fast or the stillness. The ancient structures, the most ancient epic structures, Himalayas and Arunachala. In one uh, space, it says, Arunachala is pure awareness, the embodied grace of Arunachala. Arunachala is pure awareness. Anyways, this is the Mahima of Arunachala again, but I think we have spoken enough of this place, and the beauty of this place. It's a very powerful place. If uh, you understand the teachings of this place, if you understand Ramana Tattva, if you understand Arunachala Tattva, it's a very beautiful place and you can make use of uh, this place very much for your ultimatum. So some, some of the teachings that I saw of uh, Ramana, very beautiful, which might help us on this journey. The main thing that he talks here always about is uh, surrender. You know, he talks about bhakti and surrender. Jnana, bhakti and samarpan. Jnana is the knowledge and bhakti is the devotion and samarpan means surrender. They are all interrelated. If you have the proper jnana, if this wisdom ignites within you, this jnana only will lead you automatically to surrender. It has to lead you to surrender because that's the whole tattva that's talking about. The whole tattva is talking about the same thing. What is surrender now? Anybody would like to <laughs> aim at it. What is surrender? Do you think? Because we have talked so much about the surrender, Samarpan. 
but uh, arunachala tatva gives a very subtle sukshma details of what is said and that's what i say if you understand the science of life all the spiritual path is very easy spiritual path is damn easy if you understand the science of how life works how the whole shrishti is working what are the uh, fundamentals of shiva tatva what are the fundamentals of shakti tatva so what is consciousness what is awareness simple things like that if you simply understand this you will understand all these tatvas are nothing but you only when i say what is shiva and me only what is shakti me only what is awareness me only what is consciousness me only what is life me only what is shrishti me only when i am awake when i have a separated consciousness apart from the pure awareness if i get into dual consciousness all of these tatvas become awake or rather you can say these tatvas only make me awake into non reality so this simple funda is if you in depth if you understand where do i come from what am i doing here and where will i go these three questions if it is clear cut to you the spiritual journey is damn easy it is only because we do not know ourselves properly or the mysteries of our own life that spirituality seems difficult or it becomes a burden for us or it becomes like a coaching class for us we need tuitions for it we need universities for it we need teachers to teach us so many things it's not really needed if you understand the core fundamentals so that is why arunachala tatva is a beautiful place where you can get the core fundamentals and i'm trying to simplify that as much as possible because it might seem the fundamental might seem very complicated i remember when i was on the path with my guru and he used to talk about uh, entering the koshas i thought it was like rocket science how do you enter into koshas and he used to talk about dissolving the mind dissolving the mind into the next kosha gyanamaya kosha and gyanamaya kosha dissolving into the atma one by one the koshas dissolve so it seems like rocket science but it's not really if you understand the fundamentals it's it's very simple experientially because there is nothing to technically do with these koshas it's not like you fold them up or you unwind them like an umbrella or you burst the bubble like a kosha the kosha bubble and then it disappears somewhere or you take something some force and push it into somewhere or you take the god's help or the guru's help and push these koshas somewhere it looks like that it might seem like that on the yogic path all these might seem like that but as you mature and as you understand simple consciousness and awareness you will understand through your awareness you can literally experiment with these things and it's not so difficult but because it seems so difficult we might stay far from these things or we might think it's a great feat to do or it needs some great tapobhala or it needs some great teachers to come and teach you that if you take shiva as your teacher your work is done now am i asking you to bypass your teachers not really it's not about bypass it is about access how long and how deep can you access no question of bypass if you have a good influence to reach the prime minister would you waste your time with the chief minister or the minister as simple as that if you have the capacity to reach a higher influence would you need 
कैपिटल इन्फ्लुएंस इज द क्वेश्चन Not everybody might say I have influence. So go there. Then you do need mediators. There is no hard and fast rule whether you should have one or you shouldn't have one. It depends on your state of consciousness, your state of evolution, and your power of how much subtle you have become. So from there, I say if the supreme can become your guru. You're done with it. If you are interested to go into the details, this Sunday we are having a poddi poddi because there we are discussing these things only to have a direct access to the Atman. The self is the guru. You'll see in today's teachings. Self itself is the guru. But till we realize the self is the guru, we might need. an external guru to make us realize that self is a guru so both are valid as i told yesterday the need you remember the need that we are talking about one side you put a thread and from the other side you pull it the pusher is the ego the puller is the atma The pusher is me, the I, the meditator, the yogi, the palana dimkana, doing this and that, putting all kind of efforts. And on the other end, the atman or Shiva or God is the puller, which is the self, me, the self. And both work simultaneously because what is it? Yesterday we discussed this, right? Without both these hands, this passage of the thread through the needle hole will not happen. It does need efforts from one hand to push it, and it needs a pulling also from there. Both work hand in hand. In the start, there is effort. but once the thread moves correctly through the eye or crosses the eye needle eye or your third eye if it crosses from the other end the pull happens and then the pusher becomes effortless there is no effort needed because now the pull is happening but to push through through that eye needle eye or third eye you need a force but the beauty which you might want to notice is whose hands are these both you so who is at both ends you The pusher is you. The puller is you. And who is you? I am Brahma. I am the Brahman. Shiva. I am Shiva. Shiva's both hands. So it is Shiva only who has become you. And making all that efforts. And Shiva, the pure, undiluted, diluted one. is the one who is retracting you back to the source thiru bhavani ch i find this example very beautiful on the needle and thread the whole focus should be on the hands whose hands are these your hands it is not god's hand left hand is god's hand right hand is your hand both are the same entity's hands but one hand is ignorant one hand is wise so your journey is from ignorance to wisdom one hand is dark one hand is light so journey is from dark to light so you penetrate through that needle oh nice example so what more can be said in this you know shiva sutra is, is explaining that the rescuer is the same and the one who is ignorant is the same 
that is why it is called leela play can see one is imagining to be ignorant and stuck and the other is helping out so one is a rescuer and one is a victim so this is how the whole divine play goes on if you understand this much shiva sutras is simple that's what i'm trying to say you understand the four fundamentals of life and then walk on spirituality it will be easy without that core fundamentals we might complicate things now see basic fundamental is this and which we talked about both sides you understand this much so much of relief is there in not taking this whole game so serious but if you don't understand this how serious can we become so serious we can take this life and complicate things to the extreme do we really need that as a question depending on our rightness we understand the whole game so bhagwan was asked once how can i keep my body free from disease instantly came the reply from bhagwan the body itself is a disease now how many of us can accept this no we are in the mode where we are trying to maintain this whole thing i'm not telling it should not be maintained but i'm telling the whole focus and struggle is to maintain why because we are not understanding the secrets of what these things are such as a body is it's a temporary existence so until you have taken it lightly you cannot easily pass on to the other end you will take it so serious and what is seriousness about taking the body to be permanent taking the body to be real taking the body to be to be forever so those who think all these things will be body conscious that body conscious is known as ego and the stronger the body consciousness the stronger the ego stronger the ego the far you are from the self simple fundamentals you understand this and work on this aspect through your awareness you will come closer you will solve lot of unwanted problems otherwise you will stuck you will get stuck in so many unwanted problems and then struggle to come out of it that is why arnachala tatva is the savior it literally saves you now there are many when we say about arnachala tatva they are not interested ramana's teaching they are not interested then go play the game you will play the game little more hurried way because all the other paths don't talk directly about these things and mind you no paths talk so straight and to the core that is because we are not developed to the core that is why we attract paths that are not direct we are indirect people we get indirect paths jaisa sadhya vaisi sadhana jaisa sadhak vaisa sadhya jaisa sadhya vaisi sadhana so this whole path what we are talking about shifting to awareness and all these things it's about becoming aware of the crude truths so until you embrace this ultimate truth the journey can never be easy It's for you then there is no direct path direct path means embracing understanding realizing and saying wow this is how it is by grace you understand by grace only you can accept because it share grace because grace can save you from so much of suffering and if you refuse you suffer 
So grace, if it bestows on you, you will get a direct understanding of these path. For them is level two. Now level two cannot be again where no, I don't agree with all these things. I'm still going to sit and brood of my problems. I'm still going to sit and curse the whole world, my birth, my people, my situations, my karma. Then it will not work. It cannot work. Other paths are for you. Indirect paths. Then you'll have to go through that rigid way because we love rigid ways. We love to do tapasya. Torture ourselves. Imagine further, deeper, all more hallucinations. You have been told directly that you are deluded, Brahman. So, if you have the grace of that understanding, you just wake up and say, okay, I'm deluded. Okay, this is the reality. But if you can't, then you become a delude, not just a deluded Brahman, then you become a deluded yogi, deluded meditator, deluded ritualistic, deluded worshipper, and go on, take multiple, multiple delusions and create more and more delusions and then fight your way through all that. Struggle, indirect paths. So even if you are understanding the direct paths, if you are getting opportunities to work on this, share grace. So he says the body itself is a disease. When afflicted by a disease, a person cannot pay attention to anything else. Similarly, a person who identifies himself with the body cannot pay attention to anything else other than the body. Therefore, the body becomes the disease. That is why he is saying the body is the disease. Why is he saying body is a disease? Because of the affliction towards the body. Affliction towards the body and giving more attention to the body will keep you rooted in ego consciousness. That is why he is saying it is a disease. Ego is a disease. Body is a disease. That is how he is relating it. Not in the literal terms. That this body is a disease now. Be done with it. He is not talking that way. He is telling the identification with the body is a disease. Giving it too much of importance. When you give too much of importance to this body, you are nourishing the falseness of you. You are believing in that which is false. And the more you give importance to this body, you will see automatically all those connected to this body will also become alive. Your family, your homes, your possessions, your titles, your careers, your name, your fame, your status, everything will come alive. And the more this becomes alive, the more you are into delusion, which is called as mind. So if you understand these words directly, good grace, good gracious. Otherwise, you have to go into indirect paths. Take on more identities. Become a tapasvi. Take on more objects of practice. Sit with yantras and mantras and tantras and all the tools. If you realize it, you don't need it. If you do not realize it, you need it. Which is correct? Both are correct. Depending on my state of consciousness. Because both are coming to elevate me out of antruths. But that is a longer way. Because you have to get into untruth first. You have to falsify more. And there are more chances you get stuck. I can see so many stuck in all the indirect paths. Deluded. More deluded. So, because they have a family, a concept of called grahastha was given to them. Okay, you have a family, now don't give an excuse that you're going to be stuck there forever. So here is a concept called grahastha. Means you are a householder, you are responsible for your family, at the same time responsible for elevating you out of that family drama. That's grahastha. So a concept was given. Now, the dangers, the risk of 
this indirect path is you are already deluded and a tool has come to you to remove you out of the delusion now you catch the tool and become more deluded so what happens now you become agrastha by title it came to help you out of that and now you have claimed yourself to be a householder and i can see so many literally everybody in the grahastha sinking more into that title and name called grahastha in the name of bhoga in the name of maintenance why because they are not ready to look into the deeper facts deeper truths what is grahastha they have not studied they don't want to study they are just interested in that glamour title and some excuse to say that they are spiritual so they sink into that title they don't go deep who who are the ones who go deep they say what is this grahastana and they will understand this is varanasha four ashramas of life brahmacharya grahastha vana prastha sanyasa four are now the one who wants to go deep they will study all the four brahmacharya okay time chala gaya now i am in grahastha what's next vana prastha what's next sanyasa oh my god so those who know this varanasharma they will prepare themselves okay i am a householder now next is varanasharam next which is coming is vana prastha so i prepare for vana prastha and after that towards the end of my life there is something called sanyas complete vairagya how many of the grass do this tell me nobody is interested these are the dangers of the indirect path it is come like a tool but if you don't get deep into it with awareness you don't have awareness you are not conscious about it you can sink even deeper so we can go on and on with indirect ways a devotee went into the cave near arnachala hill and did intense tapas without taking normal food he gradually reduced the intake of food till at last he subsided subsisted with a barely mouthful of food you can see many yogis doing this they reduce their food from four times to three times to two times to one time and call her tight so here is one devotee who went into a cave and started reducing his food until he came to only just eating a bare food mouthful of food after completing his penance and tapas he went to maharishi and said bhagwan i have found that i could keep my body alive with only a mouthful of food a day so great victory for this person he goes to bhagwan and he says i have been able i have succeeded in my mission and bhagwan smiled and remarked you can be alive even without the body <laughs> bodylessness is your real nature the self is bodyless asariram bodylessness means asariram asharir no body the disciple was made speechless by the power of those words so when somebody is trying to flaunt great achievement by reducing the food intake from outside here the guru is directly telling you are flaunting about i have survived with just a mouthful of food and bhagwan says you can survive even without that mouthful of food. because you are the self which doesn't need food now what is this yogi talking about that body he is talking about his bodily achievement and bhagwan is pointing to his real nature you are not the body can you see it's a direct hit and it can be told only to mature seekers it cannot be told to everybody you might think why all the gurus are not talking this all the gurus are not talking that because all the shishyas are not ripe enough to hit that hammer there if you if you note very well 
Bhagwan's all disciples were very mature souls, evolved. That is why they attracted that kind of a master there. And the master attracted that kind of shishyas. It's mutual always. Depending on each state of consciousness, they attract. So here you can see what is the prime focus. What we have been listening and contemplating all our lives is something else, which we boast of so much and we talk of so much. We aim to achieve that. And, and the truth is something else. The direct truth. So, if we have the power of this awareness to grasp this ultimate truth, you will be redeemed like this. Why is it very difficult? Look at how four people just ran away when, when we talked about this past. This ego is so strong in boasting about your past. You are so insecure with those conditioned mind of yours. Some conditioning that you have been ironed out with. And one little prick and it trembles like a leaf. It can't tolerate, it can't digest some truths. So I think in Kiliya, Arunachala is next gen. Because sometimes you can have the opportunity and still not make it because of your own conditioned minds. This is the dangers of this polluted world. This is a risk where if attention is not given properly to even spiritual matters, it can worsen stuff. Forget redeeming. It can put persons more into pitfalls. And sometimes it may take janmas to come out of it. Then he says, the devotee says, all books say that the guidance of a guru is necessary. Is it so? Bhagavan said, the guru will not give you anything that you do not already have. What can the Guru give that you do not already have? Is it anything precious that is plucking from there and putting, giving it to you? What do you don't have? What do you not have? Is he giving you God? So that means you don't have God in you? What is not there in you that he is not give, he is giving, he has to give from outside? Direct, there are direct talks. Even if you say, even if you get any such thing, means what he's saying is the Guru will not give you anything which you do not already have. Even if you get any such thing, it will go as it came. Because what comes afresh will also go. Even if something is given from outside, it will go. Because that's that's not real. What is real is within you already. Anything that is put on, plastered to you is artificial. It's not real. Which you are real. Your self-knowledge which is booming in you is real. All knowledge that we put from outside is plastered knowledge. Self-knowledge, the self contains it. Self contains the self-knowledge. It has been hidden. And we are taking knowledge from outside and plastering it over it. What is what always is, will alone remain. What always is means what? This pure awareness that I am, I never die. I am never born. My body comes and goes. My koshas come and go. But I, the pure awareness, I have already existed. So that is why he is saying, what always is, will alone remain. Rest all keep coming and going. My koshas keep on coming and going. In that kosha, all the transaction goes on. Somebody is doing tapasya on the Annamaya Kosha and reducing their food on the Annamaya Kosha. Somebody is doing kriyas and this and pranayam and working on their Pranamaya Kosha. Somebody is struggling with the mind and doing mental gimmicks and tricks and doing this yoga and that yoga and trying to control the mind and all these kind of things. Who, where? On the Manamaya Kosha. Koshas, it is happening. Is all false. It will come and it will go. 
so what comes and goes what is temporary we are playing around on that so he says what always is will alone remain rest all will come and go and we keep on playing we accumulate knowledge where into manomaya kosha does this self atman need knowledge it is itself knowledge does it need it it doesn't need it but it's plastering it where gyanamaya kosha gyan ho gaya man bhar raha hai all training is given where into these koshas does the self need training does it so as long as i believe that i am the koshas i will keep operating from the kosha level only all that is required is the removal of the notion that i am not realized bhagwan says all that needs to be removed is this wrong notion that i am not realized yet that is why we are telling i want realization who say i want self realization which is not the self only can say i want self realization which is the self can it say self can it say i want self it is already the self it is already realized so who is saying i want self realization koshas the mind is saying the body is saying the ego is saying see how beautiful and direct the teachings are now if this is too tough then you need a guru and what will the guru do is he going to do anything extra nothing he has to remove your ignorance this ignorance but it is not so directly easy so he will play around with your koshas and through those that kosha which you believe that you are i am the mind he will ask you mantra jap karo dear mind so you the mind the ego mind will start doing the mantra jap that's the way the guru annihilates that wrong idea he will work you make you work where you are established if it was in his capacity to push you inside directly he would do that but if you are too ignorant too jada too gross then poor thing he also has to use all those tools which only that jada chaitanya can understand so he says all that is needed is to remove this wrong notion that i am not realized who says i am not realized the mind because it is really not realized if it shifts into awareness that awareness cannot say i am not self realized the mind will say i am not realized we are always the self only we don't realize it bhagwan says you are always this you don't realize it only according to bhagwan the self is the eternal guru this atman only is the eternal guru eternal means what infinite nityananda nitya eternal nitya nitya guru it is enough if one looks within and contemplates so this is enough if one looks within and contemplates if you turn more inward and pay your attention more on the atman it's enough bhagwan says however since the mind has a has an outgoing tendency it will respond more actively to external factors than internal because the mind is bahemukhi it is not resting inward it is running outside so it is interested in concepts it is interested in all those external glitters it is internal it is it is externally involved in all the pomp and show that is why glamour spirituality 
who needs glamorous spirituality glamorous people that we notice this glamorous minds glamorous mindsets fashioned and conditioned minds need glamorous spirituality and glamorous spirituality is not wrong from that end because the glamour is coming for glamorous people somebody had told once who got me two ladies in one ashram and said your guru charges money so i they are also sadhak so but they are telling that your guru charges money so isn't it um, self realization for people who cannot afford money i said it is what is it that you want oh i want to be in the vicinity of an avuduta but you know so many charges and blah 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 things are there i said that's all you want to be in the vicinity of an avuduta i gave an address of achar baba talishery amma all those people in south i said go go and meet where do they stay they stay under the tree one stays under the other gutter eh are they avudus yes avudus go and sit you want to sit in their vicinity go and sit same effect no difference free of past they didn't go so i said you should not grumble because this prakriti has made arrangement for everybody you say you cannot afford there is somebody who can give you free of cost for those who can afford there is somebody who can give with cost the celebrities the rajyog people the politician the aristocrats bureaucrats the film stars people like that who are of very status and glamour minded they need that that's called rajyog so rajgurus are there for rajyog people what's wrong in that bandhos prakriti has all the bandhos bhagwan dattatreya 24 gurus we we only know to grumble now they are not telling they are fascinated they have a glamorous mind that they are not telling they are pretending to be humble but they don't want to go to humble places why because they have a conditioned mind they want to be in royal treated very royally and they are complaining of being humble but want royal treatment if they really wanted humble treatment they would have gone there simply they didn't go so one should become aware of all this crookedness so there is all kind of arrangements out there question is what am i for those who have been stripped off of all the mental condition who don't care about mind condition who want to know the ultimate truth uncompromisable truth langot walo ke sath rahenge khush they will get attracted to all the langot people nityananda ramana swami samartha why because they don't care for glamour उनको सत्य से मतलब दे आर बाउंड विद द ट्रूथ एंड दे शैल गेट इट व्हाट यू सीक फॉर यू गेट इट इज नॉट दैट स्पिरिचुअल इफ इट इज ग्लैमरस इट इज डर्टी और बैड इट्स नॉट बट इट टेक्स मोर टाइम घुमा फिरा के मेले में जाके आना है तो जाके डू मोर टाइम पास एंड कम टेक्स मोर टाइम देन डोंट सिट देयर एंड कंप्लेन why things are not faster if you want faster there is a direct path langot wale and they live in the mountains in the caves bare necessities they live near the gutters can you sit near the gutter no then don't talk about it. however since the mind has an outward outgoing tendency it will respond more actively to external factors than internal factors so bhagwan says in order to bring the outgoing mind to the source 
guru appears externally in the form of a human guru a form to which the mind responds that's what i'm trying to say because my mind is outward mahe mukhi i will find a guru who is outside it has nothing got to do with luck or fate or things that just happened or some miracle nothing my state of consciousness what is my state of consciousness bahe mukhi and i am seeking redemption i am seeking the ultimate andar se talab hai i have a deep seeking to be free but unfortunately my mind is outward so solution to become free comes outwardly externally the solution will come so in order to bring the outgoing mind to the source the guru appears externally in the form of a human guru a form to which the mind responds now the mind will start responding to that maza aaya kyu usko maza hai concept mein maza aata hai it wants entertainment guru then holds the attention of the extroverted mind and redirects it to the source the self so you can see all the gurus in this world are playing this games why they are playing games because we are interested in games they know it they know it only by playing games only they can redirect you to that bachche bachche bolte hai na small children kids they don't eat well to maa baap kya karte hain they play around with the child and slowly feed them kuch to kuch to bakwas karo do this hey see that is coming this is coming hey take one morsel put it in the mouth and the child doesn't know it is being feed fed because it is interested in the play that's exactly what the guru does he will make you sing he will make you dance he will make you chant he will make you jump up and down all those things because you love all that and if you look at the guru he doesn't do any of those things he doesn't jump up and down he doesn't do all those tandav that you all are doing because he doesn't need it if you are ready he will give that but you are not ready so he will make you do all those things that's called guru leela so depending on your structure your nature of mind you attract that kind of sadhya sadhan depending on your sadhya if your sadhya is straight you will get straight mediums to the point if your sadhya is straight ameda hum fir ke time pass karke jayenge what time hai ab ghar pahunchne ke liye tab tak ek movie dekh lete hai ek ice cream kha lete hai then that type of sadhan mediums methods you get so guru then holds the extroverted mind and redirects it to the source see that is what we are telling this needle same thing from one end who is doing this who is god who who is guru god only that param tattva only the param chaitanya only enters into the guru's body who has the panchindriyas panchakoshas and now operates through that it is a play again why because you love the play you cannot understand formless nirgun nirakara are not interested i love akara i worship the akara so here is a human body with akara and with gunas same param tattva enters there and comes and plays that game and like the child being fed the morsel of rice you slowly are directed back to the source same hand is coming from the side shiva's hand Who's guru? He was himself. That is why I said, if you can know who is playing in the body of that guru and catch that, that is you. That is the supreme source. You will straight go to the source. If you cannot, then you will be interested in the play, the body play, because you are a body person, body body conscious. so you look at another body you understand that better because you understand this body better this kosha better the dramas of this body better you will understand the dramas of that body better 
are you getting it it's it's our state of consciousness wherever it is we get it in that manner so he says guru is both within and without who is within the same supreme consciousness within us now appearing that side supreme consciousness so he creates conditions to drive the individual inward and prepares the interior to drag him to the center guru tattva he creates condition to drive the individual inward conditions play he creates conditions do this do that let us do this let us do that let us do this kind of program that kind of programs here will do that place will do that, that all those things go on different dramas all to drive you inward and while he is driving you inward he prepares the interior to drag you from the center so the needle same needle story from outside there is a push you are being given and from inside there is a pull that you, in retreat you can see that this drama of retreat this whole drama about running around the hill and doing this and doing that and this sadhana and that sadhana being in this manner being in awareness all those things which are there activated from outside is to prepare you to go inward and while you are going inward inside there is the same tattva that is ready to pull you inside that is why he says guru is both within and without thus he gives a push from without in from outside and exerts a pull from within so that you may be fixed at the center that's the param tattva play param tattva gets into guru tattva and does this whole so parmatman and jiva i am the jiva an ignorant person who doesn't know anything i do not know the jiva i am jiva and i have got an atman in me because i have atman in me i am known as jiva but the jiva is not aware of it when the jiva doesn't know it is atman the jiva atman receives an exterior body known as the guru parmatman only enters into that guru atman and then guru atman comes and introduces the jiva atman to atman and when i look within jiva looks within and finds the atman which is the self he realizes this atman is nothing but parmatman the father and the son are the same that is why jesus said i am the son my father and me are one that's why jesus is known as the son of god that is why in sarva gyanotra you can see the knowledge of self sarva gyanotra is the knowledge of the atman which is given by shiva to his son guhe or subramanya skanda whomever you call it kartikeya so the son is the representative of the father is the representative of the son the father only is acting through the son they are not different that is why in some poems murugnar called bhagwan ramana askanda he said you are talking shiva shiva only is talking the gnana through skanda that is you perfectly perfect perfect transaction because shiva needs a talker shiva doesn't talk he needs a mediator that is why he chooses his son kartikeya kartikeya is jnana shiva is shastra na kartikeya is agnya murugan this agnya only is known as guru tattva skanda is known as a guru tattva ramana is known as skanda 
Ramana is known as Guruta. Ramana is the voice of Shiva. So Shiva expresses his teachings through Ramana. Very few of the disciples can get it, like somebody like Murugna. He used to write, I was reading his letters that he used to write to Bhagavan. And everywhere he is writing, O son of Lord Shiva, O Skanda. That is why Ramana is referred to as Murga. Which is undoubtedly true. Because through Leela, Shiva Leela only, it happened that he called one person from somewhere, pulled him, absorbed him to Aranachal. Like the suction, soul pulls. And that's why Ramana said, I don't know why I am going there. I have no idea. He had no idea. He had no plans. He was pulled. He went with the flow. And then in one of the poems, Bhagavan Ramana writes to Shiva, I was Chanchala, you the Nishchala Tattva, Arunachala, Nishchala, pulled me to your lap. My father pulled me to my lap, to his lap, made me sit in his lap, Achala, the still mountain, and made me like him, like father, like son. I became still like him. And now Ramana doesn't claim that he came, did the pass, he did that, nothing. He doesn't even know what happened. He just says, out of nowhere, this power pulled me and here I am. And go to see, he has made me like him. That's Shiva Lita. And you can see all these teachings are coming through Ramana. Without Arunachala Tattva, I, I wouldn't have ever understood these things. He gave us deep topics of realization like Sarvagyanotra, Puramana, Devi Kalotra. Without Ramana, Devi Kalotra would have never have come out. And we would have never known the deep secrets of giving up concepts. Of how Shiva is talking to Parvati and revealing the secrets. How to give up everything at this stage. This is Aranachalata. The direct path for ripe and mature seekers. A devotee came to Bhagavan and said, I realize the importance and value of self-awareness, but I am caught under the net of samsara or family life. I am unable to come out of my attachments towards my own people. So can I renounce everything that belongs to me? Just one short reply came from Bhagavan that spoke volumes. He said, the self has already renounced. So here also you can see who is asking this question. If the state of consciousness in the self, it is already renounced. There is nothing to renounce. Because self is free from all the koshas and all the bandhas. Who is in bondage? The kosha. The awareness when it enters into the ego, the awareness gets trapped in that ego. And it starts believing I am this, that and this is mine. I and mine starts coming. So that is in bondage. So see, Ramana, very shortly he says, you have already renounced. You who, the self, is already renounced. But where are you? Are you in the self or are you, are you in the ego conscious? If you are in the ego conscious, then you are not renounced. That is why you feel, should I renounce? And Ramana points out, self is already renounced. It is only when we cling on to our mind that the possessive spirit takes over us. Means when we are in the mind. In a similar vein, Bhagavan said, Renunciation is not discarding of externals, but the cancellation of the uprising of the ego. You should renounce not just the possession, but the possessor too. See, he is pointing out not, it's not in the possessions. I possess this, I possess that. 
this belongs to me that belongs to me family belongs to me all those things it's not in that it's in the possessor the one who says this belongs to me he is still ignorant because he or she is in rooted firmly in body consciousness ego consciousness that is why the feeling is very strong this all belongs to me i possess all this one step back shift into awareness one shift into that awareness and you see nothing belongs to you when koshas only don't belong to you what are those things that are connected to this koshas going to belong to you mindful you might not understand this from the mind it might look scary through experience it's easy experientially when you see you can see the falseness of things that is why many who are scared don't practice this they feel they can escape this you cannot escape this final practice it will come to you one or the other janma some janma you have to give up not you have to give up you will be made to give up it will happen spontaneously so once you that's why i said understand the fundamentals of life nobody escapes this whole drama of getting caught up and then getting freed it's happening automatically once you understand it you are easily moving through the flow but if you don't get the fundamental then you are busy stuck escaping this thing. oh too scary i can't even listen about this how is this going to be possible i better not listen to this satsang only or probably now i am stuck here i listen from here and give it up from here how many times you give it up from here it will repeat and come back till you get the point truth is going to chase you for janmas so which is better keep running away from truth and get harassed by it or accept and embrace the truth and release and understand the freedom in it that's upon us if there is grace this will be understood see how direct this is in this that's that's what he his teachings were bullseye no extra talks just one sentence straight it takes you there now if you ask anybody else you want there are so many teachers and philosophers should i renounce this blah 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 story will go it is not right to renounce it right now you have to do it in this manner you have to take care of them it will go on never ending story and here is a direct answer this, this is for direct people for indirect people indirect answers as your intention that kind of answers you will get that kind of solutions you will get so he says not renouncing the possessions but renounce the possessor renounce the ego this one what he say when shri murugnar the ardent disciple sought bhagwan's blessing for self realization bhagwan's brief reply was so murugnar is the same devotee who went and he sought his blessings this thing about blessings we go on asking about blessings people write messages to me keep your blessings send your blessings who am i to bless him me so we are not getting close to even understanding this concept of blessing okay if you say i am doing my best to bless myself pray for myself you also pray for me understood what we keep blessing some chamatkar will happen nonsense utter nonsense without your own blessings no external blessing is going to be permanent maybe some temporary thing will happen from outside 
but until you learn until you evolve nothing is going to happen so when murugnar went to bhagwan and asked blessing for self realization bhagwan brief reply was irund padike iru in tamil it means be as you are see the blessing <laughs> blessing is not that i bless you with self realization or may god come and bless you with self realization the blessings of the guru to the shishya here is be as you are irunda padikiru or it means just be what we are talking about since all these months we have been talking about the final practice of just be nisardat maharaj is be nothing to do be who can be who has surrendered their ego consciousness body can because until you surrender this ego consciousness you are not going to be you cannot be so that is the question and ask let me see who all answer what is surrender abiding in the self okay good accept all whatever comes without resistance good bad yes good no worries no fear just acceptance good just being and going with the flow yes going with the flow no doership yes but no doership is no ego until you surrender that doer you cannot get into no doership you cannot get into flow you cannot get into acceptance you cannot get into no worries no fear you cannot accept everything that happens because the doer will not I accept everything that I will try to control all the time, and the doer cannot abide in the self. The non-doer will just be flung back, rest in that awareness or self, abide in the self. The doer can never abide in the self. The doer is always interested in the non-self. It is interested in everything that is other than the self. Please understand this. The doer, doer means it looks outside. not inside non doer is inside doer is always looking outside so if you look outside you become a doer so surrender means going with it surrender means becoming aware of this doer and not being interested in doing by holding the awareness that some power is working through me and then going about doing their business so that's the biggest blessing this guru is given to the shishya be as you are or just me now when murugnar asked how would should one conduct himself in dealing with the world then because his concern is that irinda padikiru means just be as you are what about my worldly responsibilities so how should one conduct oneself when dealing in the world bhagwan replied iraivan arul selutum vaike sel move as the grace of god leads you this is today's topic what i have put so in tamil he says iraivan arul selutum varikesan move as the grace of god leads you means act in this world as this grace makes you act in this world these two sentences some of the entire teachings of vedas these two teachings entire teaching of vedas so if you want to read the vedas in direct path go on reading reciting studying doing research the other is go to the sara of the vedas what is the vedas trying to say these two teachings what are the two teachings be as you are and the other is move as the grace of god moves you ramana is to love one 
teaching of Jesus from the Bible. Because in Ramana's home when he was a child, there were only two books. One was the Bible and the other was Periyapuram. So this young boy had read only two books. Periyapuranam, Mahapuran, or the Big Puran, or and with Periya Purana means the story of the 64 Shaivite saints. That's all. The great Siddhas, 64 of them, nine mars, they are stories. That is Periya Purana. So he had read their stories, that one, and he had read the Bible. That's all he had read. So he is well versed with the Bible. He is well versed with the teachings of Jesus. So he refers in some other place, Bhagavan Ravana, saying that Jesus said, be still and know that you are God. This is a teaching of the Bible. Be still is what? Summairu. Nishchala. Still mind. Be still and know that you are God. Because when you become Nishchala, you know you are Arnachala. You are Shiva. So that's why you see here also is the same. Be as you are. And the next sentence says, move as the grace of God moves you. Be still and know that you are God. Two teachings both came here. And they say, this sums up the entire teachings of Vedas. Isn't that magnificent? So simple teachings. So, this is entire what you can sum up the core philosophy of Paranachala Tattva to be as you are and move as this grace guides you. Now, how can you move as the grace guides you? First of all, you must become aware of that grace and that cosmic intelligence that is working through you and do not claim ownership of it. What ignorance is, ignorance simply means taking ownership of that which something else is functioning. It's plagiarism. Somebody writes something, you copy paste it and put your name under it. What most of the teachers in the world do, that only. You can see all the authors putting names towards great teachings. Where are they coming from? They are all coming from the Vedas and Upanishads. Nothing new. No one single teacher is talking something new. They are all talking the repeated same stuff in different flowery language and putting a stamp of their name. That's all. What happens? That's called doership. That includes me, Jake Lightfoots. It's, a, it's because what flows, it's a flowing. So if I capture and put my name into it, I have labeled that as mine. It, it doesn't belong to me. So if he says, move as the grace makes you move, God's grace makes you move, you first have to become aware of it, right? Without becoming aware of that grace, how can you allow that grace to function in your life? That is why I have prescribed so many different practices. We did one webinar on suffers. The highest practices of SI. It is there in the courses if you want. Eight different practices were there. In that the eight practices be as you are. Nothing to do. Seven different practices I gave which you most of you did like homework and you are doing it. If you are doing it continuously, very good. It will lead you to the aid. Be as you are. And in that one was Vismaya. Vismaya is wonder over everything that you see. You look at the sun, you don't look at it casually. Oh, it's the sun, I know it is. Ignorant fools who just look at things like, hey, this what? What's big deal in that? There is a big deal in it. You look at it in likeness, in consciousness. The sun setting, where does it go? The color of that, the shape of that, the brightness of that. And how this whole structure of day and night is constructed through the sun rising and setting. 
what separates the days and night this rising and setting who does this rising and this setting at so meticulous perfection and how the sunrise is different from sunset though they look like same you're looking you're in awe everything you look at wonder that's called vismaya of shiva sutras everything one grasshopper is limping you can see jumping you look at it with awe that color how come this is different from all the other creatures why is this jumping why is this knowing as a praying mantra it looks like it's praying and what a wonderful creature in its own way why is it different from a locust what must be in that little belly the digestive organs in that my god can anybody create the digestive organs of that locust of that grasshopper it's so intrinsic and a healthy locust or a healthy grasshopper everything you look at in awe what will happen is the ego will start going down and you start seeing god in everything god's play in everything a meticulous you know structure a cosmic intelligence that is taking care of everything at simultaneous everything is so alive full of atoms movement energy you look at things my god this is stable it looks solid but it's energy you look at everything anything with vismay this one practice will help you to a great deal to become aware of grace in life the eye will start simmering down because every time you are awed by something greater larger than you this becomes very small timid and you give importance to that and the more importance you give to that you are giving importance to the awareness of god you becoming again and again aware of god in life everywhere meticulously see how your life is designed your whole body I have talked so many times about this your whole body structure the way your life moves the way you breathe the way we eat the way everything is taken care of without you taking any tension in this body you'll be amazed and you'll know just by observing even your body and not the doer something is running this body body itself which i call mine which i call as me what is me in this when it is run by something else thappa laga hai na maine mera main i put a name to this which is run by some intelligence plagiarism so these these are methods which i plucked from different sources because i have utilized all this in my life to get deeper into the source and that's how we made that webinar so if you are interested to get to know the direct path and interested to understand this nature of what bhagwan is blessing murugnar with self realization he says you bless me with self realization and the only says thing the guru says be as you are the next question of the disciple is then how will i do my worldly function if i have to be as i am the next he says is move as the grace of god leads you means wherever it leads you whatever it does be okay with it the moment you are not okay with it the ego has come and it is taking control and saying i deny this because i am the doer of this you have taken ownership the moment you take ownership the god disappears from your life and then you become responsible for your actions you say i am the doer i'll take this decision then you will suffer the consequences of that and if you closely observe 
today's consequence which i am suffering is a consequence of my doership constantly i have taken this decision thing that i am the doer and that led me to where i am today and when the results come i say i'm not interested i blame god where is god where the hell is he where are hell where the hell is all the people where are all the angels gone i'm bankrupt of divinity where is everybody deserted me nobody has deserted you your choice your doership that is why the first step is to accept that my doership has brought me here when you accept you are allowing grace of god to flow in if you do not accept you are still controlling that doership and you will control your current decisions which will come in the future fruits same thing same drama and if you do not take ownership of it and you say it's functioning not just say or believe that is how it life moves you have to see it to experience it that is why vismaya see these things you will understand everything has been run by some power nothing is there my dear mera kya chalta hai i don't know when i'll get hungry i don't know when i want to go to the loo there's no particular timing it just happens am i not a victim of my going to the loo or eating food even these two things intake and outtake input and output upload and downloads is not in my hands two basic major functions which i do every single day i must live when i feel hungry i have to feed this body then this body wants to empty itself i have to take it to the washroom what is this you see everything in this body is moving according to something and i am just a victim of it and i call this owner i am the owner bhranti hai it's called mithya it's just a delusion it is a false interpretation that i feel and that it's not the truth so repeatedly i have to do these practices and become aware of the grace when i become aware then it becomes easy to allow that grace to move through my life and just keep watching just like i watch my hunger come can i bring in hunger can i bring in sleep i cannot i i simply am helpless i have to watch myself lying in bed and wait for that sleep to come i cannot say i i make a wish and say that 5 11 i'm going to wake up even if you say you you are waking up wake up at that time exact time you are a victim you wait for you to wake up what is going according to our life nothing more we have gone very deep with these tattvas so many factors playing in our life one leading to the other one leading to the other i am just a victim of my life i just move around in this body only my only work is to keep claiming i did this i did this i did this. it's happening i did this i did this put copyright everywhere brand it everywhere whereas something else is taking care so that branding we have to become aware of where where we put that seal we have to become aware i didn't do it i didn't do it realize it again and again and you will start seeing grace and when you see that allow it the people who surrender means surrender means this simple words giving up doership is surrender how can you give up doership we are going little more deeper by realizing that there is some other doer that is doing it otherwise how why will you give up doership until you know something is taking care of you will not give it right when will you hand over your precious baby 
when you are going out of the house when you are fully sure that somebody will handle it and take care of it then only you will place it in somebody else's lap and go care free isn't it so first you have to see who's the caretaker once you realize there is a caretaker you can submit you can surrender that doership i am not doing now you take care and if the surrender is not complete if let's say you half trust that person whom you give that baby to you might go but your mind will be there in the bit in between you will want to keep running back and try to take ownership again and again half trust half surrender <laughs> somewhere there was a same kind of story that happened yeah here it is there was a lady devotee who was used to visit ramanashram daily on one auspicious day there was a special puja in the ashram when she was eagerly getting ready to go some guests unexpectedly turned up and she was forced to attend to them though she was entertaining the guests offering them food and talking to them her mind was hovering around ramanash this many of us uh, retreat guys stay this or retreat is going on there so if you are not in the retreat your mind is hovering there somebody says i have guests at home i have this i have that even in satsangs satsangs i get messages now also two three people said two of them said some guests have come how badly i'm going to miss it so i'm sure their minds are there what's happening those are deeply connected with these tattvas they might be serving the guests there but their minds are here one said i have to go for a with a relatives have come and i don't want to go but what to do my mind will be here exact same story so she was ready to come to the ashram and that time only some guests unexpectedly turned up and she had to serve them though she was entertaining the guests and giving them food and talking to them her mind was still hovering around ramanashram next day when she met maharishi and explained the delicate situation which forced her to stay at home maharishi said it is good that you have chosen to remain at home to attend to your guests even while attending to your guests you were thinking of ramanashram if you had come to the ashram your mind would have been hovering around your home and your guests only you may be physically here but your mind would have been there only it is good that you chose to remain at home and thought of ramanashram rather than visiting ramanashram and thinking of home how beautiful it's still better is the same story right two friends going out and one wants to go to the ashram or temple or to god and the other wants to go to a prostitute so one ends up with the prostitute but is missing the is something like that only story is thinking all the time about god or the saint or guru or whatever or ashram and the one who has missed an opportunity to go to the prostitute has gone there ended up there in an ashram or a temple or something but is constantly thinking of the other side who is better is the question the answer is the one who is with the prostitute because though his body is there his mind is full here <laughs> when i was once in devas there was this maharaj who was from the lineage of shivam tirth maharaj vishnu tirth shivam tirth they are all from the lineage of malaleshwari they had the opportunity of being in that ashram so shivam tirth maharaj is shishya i had taken his i went to meet him and we liked each other so much that he gave us rooms and all that and three four days i was there in the ashram so every morning and evening he used to sit with us he used to call us and just simply sit morning teas would be with him so one day he 
said you have to cook and he made us cook his disciple came and said you have to cook food today because the lady the maid who is there in this ashram is not come i said we'll do it and we cooked for the maharaj and we gave and literally ate and all of that then he took us to somebody else's home and all those things happened for one full day so three times food we had to make arrangements and the next day when the lady came she made tea for us in the morning and maharaj was talking to us and maharaj went for his bath said i'll have my bath and come so that time i got an opportunity to ask this lady because they the ashram people used to boast about this lady she cannot be without this ashram day in and day out she is in this ashram all the time serving maharaj so i asked her if you are so fond of this ashram how did you stay away i heard aapki tabiyat theek nahi thi maharaj ne bata he said what meri tabiyat ko kuch nahi hua i said no but we were told you are sick so you didn't come he said no way i was every single minute thinking about my guru unhone khana khaya ki nahi unhone chai piya ki nahi unhone abhi ye kiya ki nahi wo kiya ki nahi because his pills or medicine or something she is take care completely of him she has been serving his guru and now serving him she is fully dedicated to that and she said i cannot my whole attention was here later we came to know that maharaj only had told her not to come because she told us i am shocked to hear this because maharaj told me don't come for one day and i was like shocked he never tells us this so i felt very bad why is maharaj not allowing me all my whole mind is here and i looked at my friend and said maharaj told us she is not well and there she tells you don't come that is because maharaj wanted us to cook <laughs> and cook food for him and some karmic stuff was there going on he wanted us to do that he took us to some other home and all those things he is leela whatever it is but i am talking about that lady she is telling constantly my mind was here something like that here Well, there is more. I think we can go ahead with it later. Any questions on today's session? So today's session is again about surrender and how to make life easy, suffering less, misery less. First, by understanding whatever happens is happening according to a certain certain circuit which is designed in my life. people say it is god's will but i don't fully go into that kind of a teaching when you say everything is happening according to the will of god then the next question will come why is will god make me suffer so that is an incomplete statement will of god just means a transparent system of intelligence that is simply handling according to our karmas we give this it gives us back this it is justifying everything properly to balance everything the given day so that cosmic intelligence is what you call as god automatic handling so our life is governed by our past definitely but it is done with the will of this cosmic intelligence not by my intelligence because when it comes to my intelligence i am a crooked person cunning person i will do something and when the fruit comes i will not want it i will say i don't deserve this i des- deserve something better but the cosmic intelligence knows what you deserve and you are supposed to complete that that is known as god's will so understanding this fundamental makes you free and you have more acceptance to whatever happens in life as the divine from there you start getting free that is the first step in our natural path understanding this second is after understanding practically surrendering that doership now because now we have understood if you are not surrendering doership you have not understood that is why bhagwan ramana said 
those who know will surrender and those who surrender will know so beautiful it is those who know will surrender and those who surrender will know who they are so these are the depth of arnachala's teachings if you get these fundamentals life becomes easier practice becomes easier okay so i hope no other questions here okay wait wait before we just chant the last uh, mantra it is not even 60 seconds people rush off इसका बकवास खत्म हुआ चला अभी निकल जाते माई गुरु इज टू गेट सो अपसेट एन पीपल यूज टू नॉट हैव दैट ग्रेटिट्यूड नॉट टू मी टू द डिवाइन ऑफ वॉट वॉट ग्रेस फ्लोज दैट्स हाउ वी से वी मस्ट एक्नॉलेज द डिवाइन प्रेजेंस इन आर लाइफ देर इज समथिंग सम ग्रेस दैट इज ऑलवेज हेल्पिंग अस मे बी थ्रू दिस दैट वॉट एवर मीडियम डज मैट बट देर इज सम फोर्स that is reaching us in some manner we must have a sense of gratitude to that because i am telling you if you have that you attract grace if you don't you attract disgrace it's just like snatching and running jitna hua ant liya daboch liya chalo nikal jate mera kaam ho gaya impure intentions simple tips i am telling you doesn't take much time for you to offer that prayer one prayer towards that session the time to the tatva it takes less than 60 seconds and that 60 seconds involves a three line prayer which you are blessing everybody you are simply saying in that prayer om shanti 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 may we all be blessed may we all be free and may we all evolve we are asking what i want for myself i want evolution maybe all you want not just me i want blessings maybe all be blessed i want to be free maybe all be free there's this power in that you ending that kind of a prayer for everybody there's great power in that whether you understand it or not so don't let the let one little thing uh, nip things off you know Okay, let's end this session. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Madhe Chhati Purna Si Purna Madha Ye Purna Meva Vishishti Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. May we all be blessed. May we all evolve. May we all be free. Arunachal Shukla. Stay blessed. Bye.